a part of. And the visiting nationals here, it means a lot to have visiting nationals come who are not hosting to come and listen and encourage. And, um, and Miss Scarlett in the back this morning, you know, just gave me another word of encouragement. So here I am. <laughs> Parking at the Atlanta airport, $32. Replacing my driver's license that I lost in when I walked into the airport yesterday, $35. My area, this is it glove, is $350. But being here in Irving, Texas, with all of you, is priceless. The Soul Train has left the station, driving, striving, and driving, building a pink car nation. 250 red jackets dancing down the Soul Train line, while 50 Soul Sisters cheer them on, shouting, now is your time. We are big girls doing big things, taking top trips and winning diamond rings. Inner circle bound with courage and grace, we are storming the stage and taking our rightful place. We're the most loyal area with stars and consultants the company's ever had. And that's all because we got soul and we are super bad. recognize two personal team members who are here in Irving. Uh, first time star consultant Yamashita Ray and she's my go-to person whenever I'm in Dallas. Thank you Yamashita. Woo, woo, and woo. super soul sales sister, soul sister Felicia Neal Lee who represented in the On Target Queen's Court of Sharing. She became a director in five months from joining Mary Kay. She's here with her three red jackets and her swag unit. Woo.
and something you should pat yourself on the back for. So, so one of the things that I stopped when I needed to become ultra dedicated to working with the women and building the area was I stopped a lot of TV and I, um, I also stopped Facebooking. Uh, I noticed that it was a severe time stealer. So it was quiet in my home. And that's when I heard the prehistoric bird of prey <laughs> who was injured and who had landed in my attic to heal or die. Because my bedroom was upstairs. And I heard that sound that I just played for you all. And I said, whoa, you know. And I just sat there. And then, and then it happened again. And I thought, oh my God. So I started Googling pest control and uh, like who comes and get who comes and gets a pterodactyl out of your <laughs> attic? What is the service for this? You know what I mean? Is it the fire department? And it was really late at night, so nothing was open, I was thinking. So I thought, maybe the fire department is who I should call. And I said, well, if it's injured, you know, maybe it's not a danger. I didn't hear anything moving, so that's how I knew it was injured. And I said, okay. So I sat there, paralyzed, and sweating under the arms, and I'm sitting up in the bed trying to hear it again. And then, and then, sure enough, one more time, I mean, the, it, it, he, re, he reared his, his head again and made that sound. Imagine, can y'all imagine this? Can, can you really even consider hearing this? I mean, the bird is dying. Okay, so... Um, I decided that it would, it, it would be okay. I had a tough time um, going back to sleep. And what I did is I turned on the TV to kind of drown out the sound. And during that time of qualifying, my mom agreed. I live in the same neighborhood as my mom, who is Sonia Hunter Mason. She's an emeritus national sales director. And I live in the same neighborhood, as I mentioned before, I'm a single mom. And so during that time, I really needed support with the kids. They were three and seven at the time. So she would come over and get them ready and take them to school for me so I could just stay in my incubator and, and let God tell me exactly what needed to happen that day. And she came over that morning after she had taken the kids. For some reason, she came back. I couldn't wait for her to come back. I had not, I had not made a noise. I had not moved. I hadn't moved the bathroom, nothing. I was just like not wanting to move, you know? And when she came in, I said, Mom, there's a bird in the attic. You know, an angry bird, and it's dying. I said, listen, because it, it was every once in a while, made that sound. I said, listen, Mom. And she listened, and it did it again for her. You know, she, I, I was so proud of the bird. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man. You know, did it again for her. Because, you know, when you want to tell somebody your story, uh, sometimes people just don't act right. And the bird, the bird made that sound again, made his little war cry, you know. And then um, she listened, and then she walked out of my room, and she listened again in the hallway upstairs. And then like three or four seconds later, my mom came back in my room with this. <laughs> Fear 
is false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. So fear strangles futures. Fear takes hold. Fear paralyzes. Fear causes unnecessary regret. Fear makes you pee your pants. <laughs> okay? And so, what I learned, three things I learned about fear. Number one, is that fear, that imagination is the root of fear. That's at the root. I imagined, because I could not make heads or tails of this sound, my imagination took over. And it became, can you, now think about the, the sense that makes. For me to all of a sudden think that a prehistoric, because it sounds prehistoric to me, a dinosaur <laughs> who's injured, who made its way into my attic and decided to, to scream his anguish in my attic. That's what my imagination did to me. So at the root of fear is imagination run amok. That's the root of fear, okay? And number two, fear will make you pee your pants. <laughs> and nobody got time for that. <laughs> We're too cute for that, okay? And number three, be careful, e ever so careful, with whom you entrust your fears. Because when my mom came over, who seriously only wants the best for me, and for us marching to national, she was the proudest mom on the planet at that moment, doing whatever it took to get her baby girl to the finish line. But when I told her, I said, Mom, listen, she was calm, she, she, she thought about it, and she was in her right mind, because I wasn't. And when she came back in with Iron Man, she didn't make me feel crazy. <laughs> she acknowledged it. She just simply said, said that, and she let me go through my whole... <laughs> You've got to be kidding. My own turmoil. She didn't make me... She didn't... I told you so. So you have to be very careful with, with whom you entrust the way your imagination has taken hold of you. That's what I learned. So... There are five, five practices to conquer fear. Number one, and you can probably say this with me, is faith. Faith. Because fear and faith cannot exist in the same place and space. And you have a choice. Number two, practice to conquer fear is focus. And you've got to focus on the facts. What is real here? What, there was nothing real about me even thinking that A, it was a bird, <laughs> B, it was injured. It just didn't make any sense. I didn't focus on the facts. The facts are there for you, so you've got to focus on that. Number three is to face it. Look at it in the right eye. Look right at it, and you'll find. Number four... Go forward. Anyway, even though you have your faith, even though you're focused on the facts, you face it and you go forward. That's number four. Number five, you gotta fly. You've gotta fly in the midst of fear. Climb the ladder of success step by step. And I believe you can fly. I believe that. So stand up for me. Put your stuff down. And I want you to repeat after me. These are our fearless affirmations. As I challenge my fears, As I, challenge my fears I am strengthened and empowered. I am strengthened and empowered. I accept and love my fear. I accept and love my fear. And then I let it go. And then, and then I, I let, let it go. go. I accept that fear is just a feeling. I accept that fear is just a feeling. Which will subside as I move forward. Which will subside as I move forward. I act in spite of fear. 
I act in spite of fear. And the fear fades away. And the fear fades away. So give your fearless selves a hand. Woo!